Hey everyone, thanks for checking out Dave's World. If you're looking for custom parts for your Chevy Cruze, uh, don't forget to check out davescustomparts.com. I have a lot of really cool things that I keep putting on the site. Also, don't forget to check out the Cruise Missile playlist, which can be found on my YouTube channel under Cruise Missile or Cruise Mods. Thank you very much. Hi everybody, welcome to the Dave's World YouTube channel. So. What I was about to film was actually a behind the scenes video for the members section of my channel. So anybody who doesn't know, I have a members section where uh, people could uh, join the membership and you get to have direct contact with me. There's a lot of perks. And one of those perks is behind the scenes stuff. I was originally filming this video as a behind the scenes video for the channel. I realized that I think the entire cruise community could benefit from the stuff that I was gonna put in this video. So I'm gonna take this out of the member section and I'm gonna share it with everybody. First things first, what I wanted to talk about was like key things that I come across that are actually problems with these cars or, or diagnostic things that actually need to be fixed that I catch with subscribers and members uh, to help them get their cars running. So part of the membership is people are actually asking me diagnostic questions and I sort of point them in the right direction and we get the cars back on the road. Considering the information I've been getting, I wanted to just make a video to put some of it in and I'm probably gonna have continuation videos. This is not gonna be everything that can go wrong. It's just, I'm gonna touch on a few things and then put the solutions in this video as well. Shout out to Travis. Travis Crewy has been running my larger intercooler and he's been testing it with his big turbo. I'm going to put a uh, screenshot in the video right now so you guys could see what he said to me. He's been running, I think, um, I think the average temperature by him is like 60 to 70 degrees. He's been sending me screenshots of what the intercooler has been doing. He's noticing roughly a 90 degree difference between the OEM intercooler and this intercooler. And that's with a large turbo. Just so you know, a larger turbo has hotter intake temperatures because the larger compressor compresses more air. And when you compress air, it heats up. Uh, so your intercooler needs to work harder to cool everything down. So that's where this bigger intercooler comes into play. And he's running hotter intake temperatures from the turbo and the intercooler is actually bringing it down lower than a factory intercooler. So that's pretty cool. Uh, all right, so a couple things I wanted to touch on. Uh, first things first, the PVC system. When I was in the middle of removing the original turbo, I noticed that there's a third breather. So you have your two PVC valves up here, and then you have a breather on the valve cover back here. These are where you would put a traditional catch can in. Uh, but also this rear breather, I tied into the catch can. So my catch can system has now the, the easy uh, bracket holder, right? Then I have an add-on for that where you can actually take the breather, block off the turbo, uh, vent and then tie everything into the catch can so all of the oil gets caught in the catch can The reason I'm bringing that up is when I pulled this out There was literally oil pouring out of the line and when I looked inside my turbo the turbo wasn't blown But there was so much oil inside the turbo that someone who doesn't really know much about turbos would think that turbo was bad so That's why I bring it up uh, if it's something basically check your turbo see if you have oil issues if you want to fix the oil issues I have a solution um, if not, I can sort of point you in the right direction. Okay, the next thing I want to touch on is uh, under here, you have your wastegate and the arm goes to this actuator. I'm going to put some footage in of what I'm talking about and what you should check for. I'm noticing on these turbos, people need to look for the cracks that are at the back of the wastegate and check to see if there's play on the actual arm. I posted this video on my, it was either my Instagram or Facebook. Okay, I just wanted to show you guys something. Right here is your wastegate actuator arm and it opens this, I'll call it a valve, around the outside of it. Look for cracks and check for play. If you have any kind of play on here or if you have any kind of cracks around it, what ends up happening is you end up having leaks and when you have leaks, you end up having boost issues. And I'm noticing that over time, between losing oil through the bearings and the impellers and having play on the, uh, the impeller or having play on this, you end up uh, not catching turbo problems early. So check on this every once in a while. Make sure there's no play, no noise. Like this one's pretty solid, but I have ones that I've had um, subscribers send to me that 
make like sort of a jiggle noise like that, but you actually see this thing moving. Okay, so there's another thing I talk to a lot of people about. Uh, a lot of times when someone messages me, they say hi, uh, they tell me they love the videos, uh, they're happy with you know the, the support that I give the uh, cruise community, which I absolutely love, keep doing that, it's great. Uh, but then we segue into basically like, oh, my car's not running right or I wanna do something to the car. Uh, but when it's, when it's a conversation about the car not running right, the first thing I always ask is what's going on with your spark plugs. It's very important to know what's going on with the spark plugs. I know in a manual it might say change your plugs probably at like 100,000 miles. So a lot of people think, oh, they don't need to be changed because my car might only have 50,000 miles on it. However, this is a direct injection engine. What people don't realize about direct injection engines is they share a lot of technology with diesel engines. What I mean by that is they use a high fuel pressure they use a very, very um, thick combustion chamber. They have spark plugs that go deep into the cylinders. Okay, so I know diesel engines do not use spark plugs. I was just making references to how gas engines that are direct injected have similarities to diesel engines. 90% of diesel engines are pretty much a direct injection situation and their ignition is actually squeezing the air and fuel in a high compression a combustion chamber and that squeeze is actually what's igniting the fuel. So what I was making reference to is how deep everything is into the cylinders and then in this situation the spark plug is the ignition. And what happens is the spark plugs get really corroded over time. So because of the, the direct injection fuel injectors your fuel is right in the cylinder right next to the spark plug older style engines that are non-direct injected, the air and fuel actually mix in the intake and then they get ignited by the um, spark plugs. But because it happens all in the same place, these things can get pretty gunked up. So if you look here at the diode area, I mean, look how black these are. Now my car was running good. And if you look at the diode area where the, where the, the spark would jump, this is getting pretty corroded and this is a good running cruise. So I have people who send me pictures of spark plugs that are actually disgusting looking. Uh, if I have pictures, I'll show you some uh, pictures of, of like a bad looking spark plug. I, sh I probably even have some on the bench that I might have lying around from another project and I'll, I'll take a picture and put it into the video. So that's something I like you guys to check. And if you look under here, basically this is your air intake pipe. Right below the air intake pipe is a diverter valve. That diverter valve, it, uh, some people modify it and they put the HPRV in. So basically it gets sandwiched in between the diverter valve. I'm going to show you guys footage too. I did take footage of me uh, swapping that over from this turbo. What ends up happening is uh, after checking the spark plugs, after checking to make sure the uh, car has no check engine lights, uh, what ends up happening is I start checking for like boost leaks. Or my next question might be how much boost do you have? So you might check your scanner, you might have a mechanical gauge like me. And if I'm seeing that you have a low boost, there's a few places where you could be leaking boost that are very common. One of them is the HPRV. Under the HPR, basically under your diverter valve is a big O-ring and under the HPRV is another O-ring. And then at basically the plunger that moves in and out on the HPRV is a third O-ring. A uh, few things keep happening. Either you put it in and the bolts came loose over time and you produced a, a basically a boost leak or the o-ring may have been forgotten about which is very common um, or the third thing is the o-ring just goes bad so you want to check that area too i'm noticing that that's basically 50 percent of the time when it comes to a boost leak that's the main culprit and then i'm going to show you something else on the uh, factory intercooler that's the other main culprit Okay, so here is the factory intercooler. Uh, this little tiny intercooler is actually inside the cooling pack in the front of the car. It sits basically right under the radiator and it picks up a lot of heat. I mean, these things run very hot. I don't know why GM designed it that way, but I'm assuming the hotter temperatures help with gas mileage possibly, I don't know. So, key areas that end up leaking on these things. Uh, the, big, the big one is typically here to here. From here to here, and right at the throttle body at the top, these things just clip in place. So since they just pop in place, uh, what ends up happening is over time, the springs get weak and these things start popping off. Uh, you can't get the springs. The O-rings go bad. You can't get the O-rings. What you have to do is replace this entire pipe. So this entire piece, this one piece 
is about $200 from GM. And then there's another little one over here, which I do not have. Uh, I ended up giving that to a subscriber because uh, he was having trouble with his car. He got into an accident, so I gave him mine. Uh, so there's another one that pops on there and it goes up to the turbo. And then uh, that one leaks as well. It has the same, it's the same type of connection, but it's like an aluminum one with a rubber hose. So these end up going bad over time. So I actually came up with a fix. In case you have this problem, not that I'm trying to sell you on it, I actually have a replacement uh, uh, intercooler pipe set up that gets rid of this restricted pipe and actually mounts right to the factory turbo. And that allows you to get rid of all of these leaks and have something more solidly mounted. Uh, that way you don't have to worry about uh, the factory system going bad. And it actually gives you a little bit more power because you have a lot less restrictions. There's, there's a ton of restrictions in this plastic pipe. Uh, you actually get a little better cooling from it, ironically. I did have somebody actually show me some numbers. So, so that's another part that leaks. Uh, oh, and then the third part would be like actually where the plastic housing meets the uh, aluminum right here leaks as well. Not as common. That is very common. So one thing you should keep an eye on is your air filter. Uh, if you're like me and you're doing some crazy work to your car, you definitely want to change this thing. I bought my intake used uh, because I paid like, I don't know, 120 bucks for it. These things are like $400 new, but it came with this crappy filter. This is actually supposed to be like a red color, maybe even like a, a funky looking purple. It's so gross that uh, I, I asked my wife to just stop and get me an aftermarket cone filter just for now from like uh, advanced auto parts, just so I can throw it in. But one thing I did notice is these things, uh, they get overlooked and they get crappy. And then what ends up happening is the mass airflow sensor ends up being a problem. All that debris gets right into the mass airflow sensor. Then what happens is the mass airflow sensor ends up giving you a lot of check engine lights. Uh, I can't think of any codes at the moment. I will possibly throw some codes up on the screen just to show you what I was talking about. But I had a couple subscribers ask me basically, you know, my car's running funky, what's wrong? And I asked them for a code and the code kind of points to the mass airflow sensor. And I sort of asked them like, what, like what intake do you have? What's the last thing you did related to the mass airflow sensor? And based on what they tell me, I point them in the right direction. So I had one person tell me they actually took it out and cleaned it already. Um, the problem was when they put it back in, the bolt wasn't all the way down. So what ended up happening is fresh air got sucked in behind it and the car was running crappy. So keep an eye on these bolts because if you put in an aftermarket intake, these could potentially just be loose. So even though you might not have removed this, check these bolts and make sure you have the O-ring around the mass airflow sensor. And the other thing I've been noticing when people are asking me uh, diagnostic questions is the mass airflow sensors are, are very sensitive on this car. And uh, even, even as simple as like taking them out, looking at them and putting them back in, if you touch them, it ends up throwing them off and then you have to clean them. And then a lot of people improperly clean them. They spray them down with a mass airflow cleaner, put them back in, but they leave them wet. So you go start the car and it gives you a problem. Also with these cars, even with the car, you know, the key turned off, if you disconnect the connector, the computer will pick it up and it might set a check engine light. So a lot of times you can just clear a code and then the code will just disappear uh, because it's just a ghost code. Okay. Hi, I guess you guys have a chance to say hi to Hunter and Ryder. What's up boys? Hi. Hi. You guys back from school? What do you have? What is that? It's a new, uh, new Among Us folder? Or it's Among Us poster? poster. <laughs> That's pretty cool. You want to say hi to everybody? Hi. No, no, we're not doing that. What? That's what you do in Among Us. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know that's what you're supposed to do in Among Us, but I don't want you to do it on my channel. Uh, do, you, do you like... I do. I think that's really cool. You want to hang it up in the bedroom? Yeah. All right, cool. Fine. I don't know, in a little bit. All right, I got a little distracted. My wife and kids just got home. Uh, so that means we have a filter now. So we're gonna put this in. Uh, actually, let's see what it looks like. Nice looking filter, blue matches the car. I'm okay with that uh, for now. Eventually I'll probably possibly get a K&N filter, but I don't know if they make blue. I like that blue accents. Uh, what was the last thing I was talking about? So, oh, mass airflow sensor. So what I wanna do is the, the last big thing might be fuel injectors, but that's a big problem that could be an issue in the future, but you know what? I haven't seen a lot of people have major issues. And what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna do a whole nother video just on fuel injectors. But for right now, um, I'm just letting you guys know an update on the car. I'm letting you know an update on like what I'm doing with the car because I'm wait, since, since I'm waiting for a tune file, I'm doing a lot of other little things like uh, going over all the maintenance items on the car because I want it ready for the dyno day. Uh, and if you guys are new to the channel and you're watching this for the first time, 
uh, the car is going for a dyno run on uh, Monday the 4th and I have to get the car ready. I don't want any hiccups because the place I'm going to doesn't do any tuning. So if I bring it there and the car runs like crap, I still owe them money and I still have to bring the car back after I fix it. So I'm trying to work all the bugs out of it before I get it there. And so far the only bug has been like a little bit of a mid-range um, hesitation. I'm just waiting for the file to be updated and sent back to me so I can put the new file in. Uh, so yeah, so this was just an update video. Like I said, this started out as like a behind the scenes, but I decided to turn it into a video for everyone. Um, if there's any other things that you guys uh, think I should be adding in the future videos, let me know. I take a lot of feedback seriously from everyone. Uh, a lot of the members, you know, you guys are awesome. You, you, you give me any information I usually need and you help me sort of diagnose things myself because you can give me, you know, information from your cars and I give you information from my car. I, I give you help, you give me help, and I love that. Uh, oh, by the way, if you're a member and you want a shout out, uh, message me on the members only email. Uh, what I want to try and do is as a thank you to anybody who's a member on the channel, uh, I want to give you shout outs in the beginning of the videos. Uh, I think that's a lot of fun, and anytime I use any information that you give me, I, I will shout you out in the videos because I want to support you guys as much as you support me, and I really appreciate it. Uh, also, that doesn't mean I don't care about just regular subscribers. You guys, I have a public email. I, I love getting messages from you, and I love it when you guys tell me that you are um, loving the videos. I love it when you tell me that the video helped you out. Uh, you know, you guys even give me suggestions on future videos. I enjoy that. I enjoy the feedback, and you guys help my creativity. Uh, you guys are awesome. Thank you very much, and have a very nice day.